Good morning, everybody. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Get started here in just a moment. Romans chapter 4. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Romans chapter 4 is where we are this morning. Romans 4, beginning in verse 9, talking about faith. Is this blessing then only for the circumcised or for the uncircumcised? For we say that the faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or had he been circumcised or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that the righteousness would be counted to them as well, and to make him the father of the circumcised, who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. This is a great little section in Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 4, beginning part of chapter 4, he talked about how Abraham was credited righteousness to him by faith, that Abraham believed and therefore he was considered righteous before God. That's the entirety of the argument in Romans chapter 3 through 5. The idea that we are made right before God by faith in Jesus Christ. We're sinners. We're separated from him. We're at odds with him in our sin by nature. But God makes us right with him uh, when we trust Jesus by giving us the gift of faith to trust in Christ Jesus. And we trust in Jesus, we become declared righteous before God's eyes. That's called justification. The idea is that immediately we are made right before God's presence by faith as a gift of his grace. Not anything we do. Uh, we believe, accept, receive the gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, the gift of salvation, the gift of righteousness. And as a result of that, we are declared right before the presence of God. God decides to do that. Now we turn our attention to this particular section, and we are, Paul's asking a very important question. And this important question is for those who are in the church in Rome. The church in Rome, like most congregations in the Gentile world in the first century, was made up of Jews and Gentiles. Now, most of us listening today are probably Gentiles by origin. Uh, maybe there are Jews who listen, who have come to faith in Jesus, or maybe you're interacting with this faith for the first time. But most of us are, Jew, are Gentiles by origin. We were not born into the Jewish faith. The idea of that existing back in the days of the Roman Empire was slim, and the reason for that is because um, Jews were the ones who first came to faith, and then Gentiles came into the faith as well. And so most congregations in the first century, especially in the Gentile world, which Rome would have been in the Gentile world, had both Jews and Gentiles. And so there was a question in the midst of that congregation as to who was more righteous, who was um, the ones who had the eyes of God upon them the most. Should Gentiles have to go through circumcision? What is required to be a Christian but that's a question we still ask today. What does it mean to be a Christian? And simply it means this, to trust Jesus with our lives, to repent of our sins and follow Jesus. So place our faith in him, repent of our sins and follow him. And that's what Paul's getting at here in Romans chapter 4. And he's using an argument with reference to circumcision, saying Abraham was circumcised. Genesis chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 um, Genesis, uh, Abraham, excuse me, receives the sign of circumcision. God calls Abraham to be his own man. He calls him from the Ur of the Chaldeans. He says, I want you to go where I'm going to lead you. You follow me. And Abraham gets up and goes, takes his family. Uh, he follows God and God gives him this beautiful promise, <clears throat> excuse me. And then there is a sign of the covenant that is given to Abraham. And that covenant is God says, if you follow me and you're faithful, I'm going to give you this land, make your nation great, etc." And so if you follow me, uh, I'm going to honor my word. And so there's a covenant that God gives to Abraham. And so as a sign of that covenant is the sign of circumcision. And so the question was, well, do you have to be circumcised? Are only those who are circumcised? Is Abraham righteous because he was circumcised? The answer, of course, is no. Paul answers that definitively and says, no, Abraham was made righteous before God because he believed. And it was not after circumcision, but rather before. The, the placed his faith in God, walked with God, obeyed God, went to where God called him to go, received the covenant blessing of God, the promise of God. Then he received the sign. 
And so he says this was in particularly this was particularly done in order to make Abraham the father of those who believe, period. Circumcised and uncircumcised. If you're a Jew, you've got to believe in Jesus. If you're a Gentile and you've not been circumcised, you've got to believe in Jesus. The circumcision of the flesh doesn't matter. It's a sign of the covenant. Now, you must trust Jesus. And that's an important point what Paul is trying to make here, that our hope rests solely in the faith we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope you guys understand that today. And that's what we've been trying to drive home up to this point in the book of Romans. And I hope that you continue to grab a hold of it. We've sinned and fallen short of God's glory, but God's made us right in Jesus Christ. And we receive that gift of salvation through faith in him. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Be encouraged today. Walk in the Lord. Walk in faith. See you soon.